What a blessing it is to be together. Today we're talking about the practice of living in our bodies. The practice of living in our bodies. Many of us live in our minds more often than we want to or even need to. And today we remind ourselves that when we more fully live in our bodies, we can more deeply connect with our spirituality. The heart of Christian traditions, after all, is about living in the body. Christmas is about the birth of a body, a baby named Jesus. Easter is about the death of that body and the life after death of that body and of its spirit. And in between the birth of that body, the, the birth of Jesus and the death and resurrection of Jesus, we hear stories about bodies healed, bodies fed, bodies washed and anointed with oil, bodies given new life. So if you're looking for some ideas on how to more fully live in your body, well, you've come to the right place. Perhaps you are someone who already lives in your body. Perhaps you are someone who, when you hear about a tragedy in the world, your first question is not, how shall I pray? Or not, how can I learn more about the situation? But perhaps your first question is, what can I do? How can I act with my body to help? If that is you, then maybe this reflection time is not directly for you. Maybe this is a space for you to celebrate the ways you already live in your body, to give thanks for the many ways you already live in your body, and to help find ways to help the rest of us who live in our minds more often than we want to or need to. I remember in my childhood when I decided I made the choice to separate my body from my mind. I was around 10 years old. I knew that I was different. Although I couldn't put into words then, I knew that I was gay. And I knew that if my family ever found out, I would be kicked out of my home. I remember sitting at my grandparents' dining table and my grandfather lecturing the family. He said, the number one worst thing you can do in this family is to be a... And he said a not-so-nice word that I will not say out loud, out of respect for this sacred space of loving and belonging. And so at 10, I worked to separate that part of myself rooted in my body from the rest of myself centered in my mind. I imagined pushing my sexuality deep inside me, far away from the light of day. I was afraid of losing my home and my life as I knew it. I hated myself for being different. I was disgusted with myself. And I used that self-hatred and that self-disgust to push it all down and away, out of sight, out of mind. In a way, I was like Zacchaeus. I climbed up into the sycamore tree of my mind and separated myself from the road below. The road crowded with bodies, dusty, sweaty, smelly bodies. And from the distance of the upper branches of my tree, I lived mostly in my mind. Zacchaeus was a tax collector. He had entered into a contract with the Roman Empire to extract money from his neighbors. Tax collectors were known for being dishonest, Zacchaeus' Jewish neighbors disliked him for working for and with the Romans. They saw Zacchaeus as a traitor and, as we heard, called him a sinner. One day when Zacchaeus heard that Jesus was on his way, Zacchaeus climbed up into a sycamore tree, 
Zacchaeus was short in stature and wanted to see and be above the crowd that was following Jesus. When Jesus and the crowd got to the base of the tree, Jesus looked up, called Zacchaeus by name, and told him to come down. Imagine Zacchaeus's surprise. Jesus, the leader of a new and growing movement, knew his name and had looked into his eyes and had told him to come down from the tree, from the tree where he, Zacchaeus, could live with his thoughts and ideas and onto the road among the people where he would become a part of the action. During moments when you have been living more in your mind than in your body, who or what has called you out of the tree of thinking onto the road of action? Who or what has called you to practice living in your body? Much of my exploration of faith and spirituality has been learning how to more fully live in my body, reconnecting my mind with my body. In my last year of college, I started to admit to myself that I was gay, and a therapist helped me come down from the tree. I moved to New York City and started going to bars and parties. It was so much fun. <laughs> A lot of fun. <laughs> and the men I met, the men I dated, helped me come down from the tree. In New York, I found a church. And by volunteering as an usher and then later as a worship leader, the people of my new spiritual home helped me come down from the tree. Eventually, I discovered a call to go to seminary. And I realized, unlike my 10 years of work in accounting, which was entirely of the mind, in hindsight, that was a great choice for me, work in the church required mind and body. So in seminary, I actively practiced and sought out ways to practice living in my body. I tried to repair the divide that I had created between my mind and my body. I sang with the gospel choir where the music was memorized, completely embodied. I joined the liturgical dance choir. And so much of the way I am present in worship today is because of what I learned in the liturgical dance choir. I learned how to be present with people during coffee hour and at the hospital, present not only with my mind, but with my whole body. And since seminary, I've continued to seek out experiences to practice living in my body, yoga, knitting, labyrinths, a sound bath. In December, some of us here went to a sound bath that Adrian Bawa offers once a month in Chateau Chapel. And I'll tell you a little bit more about my experience at the sound bath later. In each of these experiences, I have been called down from the tree, down from the tree of contemplation and onto the road of action. Once Zacchaeus came down from the tree, three things happened. One, Zacchaeus met Jesus face to face, and Zacchaeus welcomed Jesus to come to his house for dinner. Now, to be clear, as you heard, Jesus actually invited himself over for dinner, <laughs> and Zacchaeus went along with it. I mean, what else are you going to say to Jesus? <laughs> Two, Zacchaeus admitted the wrong, the harm he had caused. And Zacchaeus sought to correct the wrong, to repair the harm. At the base of the tree, Zacchaeus stood his ground and said to the crowd, if I've defrauded anyone in the least, I will pay them back fourfold. Zacchaeus admitted his wrong and sought to repair it. And third, 
Jesus tells Zacchaeus that salvation has come to his house. In biblical Greek, the word for salvation is what happens when a lost sheep is found. Today, Jesus was saying, Zacchaeus, today you have been found. You had been lost. You had wandered away from the flock, away from kindness and respect and generosity. And now you have reconnected. You have reconnected with community and compassion and love. This is what we can learn from the story of Zacchaeus. Find your way back to community and compassion and love. Meet Jesus, who is divine love. Meet divine love face to face and welcome that divine love into your house, into your home, into your heart. Admit your wrongs, the harms you have caused, and seek to repair those wrongs. And like a lost sheep, you will be found. Like a lost sheep, you will be embraced by the one who has been waiting for you to return. Friends, this is how we heal the world. Our world, full of violence and greed and hatred for the sake of hatred. I just don't understand that. This is how we heal the world by inviting divine love into our hearts, by admitting our wrongs and seeking to repair them, and by seeing that we have been found and that we are loved more than we can imagine. Friends, this is also how we heal ourselves as individuals. We come down from the tree where, to be honest, we have been a little too comfortable for a little too long. We invite divine love into our heart. We admit our wrong. We confess the ways we have harmed ourselves. The harm of denying who we are, of pushing away our truest self, the harm of believing others when they tell us how we should feel about ourselves, that we should hate ourselves, the harm of doubting ourselves, doubting that we are worthy of love and we are capable of love. And after confessing, the ways we have hurt ourselves, we ask ourselves for forgiveness. We ask ourselves for forgiveness. We seek to repair the damage. We find ways to pay ourselves back fourfold with compassion, with kindness, with tears, with laughter, with joy, with generosity, with patience. That's very important. Patience and with love. As we admit our wrongs and seek to repair them, we realize that we have been found. We are no longer lost. We are re reconnected with the divine source of love and we are a part of, we are joined up with. We belong to an ever-flowing movement of divine love. At the sound bath, the sound healers welcomed us into Chateau Chapel. As they began, I closed my eyes. Drums, gongs, singing bowls, rattles, harps. My mind let go. My body took the lead, hearing and feeling the vibrations. I got lost in time and space. Outside of time and space, I decided to visit myself at 10 years old. I sent myself, my 10-year-old self, love. I told him, 
I know things are scary and painful, but you are not alone. I am with you, and I love you more than you can imagine. And then since I was already outside of time and space, <laughs> why not? I visited myself at 80 and at 90 years old. I sent them love, and I told them, Chad, whenever you feel lonely, remember this moment years ago in the chapel, and know that you are loved, and remember, you are not alone. We are being called, you are being called by name. Come down from the tree and onto the road, and there, there among the bodies, sweaty and dusty and smelly, there among the bodies, singing and laughing and crying and dancing, there you will find love. And there you will be found. You're already found, and also you will be found.